Basically, both nations wanted an end to this war. The United States possibly more than Britain because the country was bankrupt by this time. In many ways, the uh, War of 1812 was America's first Vietnam. Why? Because by 1814, there were student demonstrations in Baltimore, throughout New England. People were disenchanted with the way the government had pursued this war. It was clear that it was not going to be a victory. The British public was really war weary. They were weary of, of the conflicts, they wanted people back home. More than anything else, they were weary of the expense of war. The national debt had soared over the, over the years since 1799, and it, had, uh, it really was creating a, a tax nightmare. So for most British people, they wanted an end to this war. The Treaty of Ghent was uh, Madison's last best hope in his view for getting out of a war that was clearly not going well on any level. And the British saw it the same way. The British sent third-rate negotiators. We sent some of our smartest people. As a result, we probably did better at the treaty than we did on the battlefield in most cases. It'd be fair to say what the United States lost on the battlefield, they gained back they gained back at the negotiating table. Britain's war aims were for the war to end. A lot of what the British did during the War of 1812, the whole campaign in 1814, the campaign in Baltimore, the capture of Washington, they were all designed to try and force the Americans to the negotiating table. In Kent, the British have sent a commission and the United States has sent a commission They've all come with their relative points that they want in terms of territorial gains, um, rights of trade, uh, impressment, uh, that is uh, taking uh, sailors off of a ship and putting them into your own navy, a whole series of factors. And as the talks go on, you slowly see each one of these negotiating points, if you will, being pulled away because it's evident that they just want the war to end. The one thing that the British uh, government wanted was provision for the Aboriginal peoples. Uh, this had been a, a, a disastrous part of the Treaty of Paris, which established the United States in 1783. There, no provision had been made for the Aboriginal peoples who fought for the crown. I think in the larger scope of things that um, the British didn't really plan for them to become a part of British society, uh, maybe as subjects and to, uh, but not, not as equals. At one point, the British proposed there should be an aboriginal barrier state, which would be roughly the western part of what was known as the Old Northwest. But even if that had been agreed to, that simply would prevent Americans from buying lands from Indians. There would be no um, a treaty provision there that would prevent Americans from seizing the land in what they claimed was a just war. So I don't think there was any way the Indians were going to halt or roll back westward expansion regardless of the outcome of the War of 1812. I can't help but think, though, every now and then, did they really mean what they said when they made these treaties? Were they just using us, duping us into, lulling us into complacency with the ultimate goal to take the land? The Indians never really trusted the British. They pretty much had got the idea right. They knew the British were, would help them as long as it suited Britain. And they were not there to help the Indians for the sake of the Indians. It's very interesting to um, follow the, uh, the record of the, the weekly or sometimes daily uh, uh, sessions between the British and uh, American representatives as uh, a British victory would come in, the, the, uh, the British position was strengthened and then American victory would come in and the American position was strengthened. And the thing was, throughout most of the summer of 1814, the British were on the offensive diplomatically, uh, but then after Plattsburgh, Fort McHenry, etc., they had to back off. The Treaty of Ghent is, is fraught with, with ironies. Uh, it, uh, 
It solves none of the war's issues, perhaps foremost. It uh, announces the status quo antebellum, the state of things before the war. And so none of the war's causes are addressed in any way. Uh, the orders in council, the economic uh, difficulties, the neutral rights that the Americans were so fervent about at the beginning of the war uh, are repealed before the war is even declared. There is no statement about impressment as a policy as a result of the treaty. Uh, the Native American uh, situation is destroyed with, with Tecumseh's uh, destruction. And actually, the Treaty of Ghent talks about the honoring of, of Native American lands, which are pretty much ignored in the outcome. And so uh, none of the war's causes are truly addressed. It simply makes the whole thing go away. It's a tie. <laughs> 